what's up everybody welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing a dana 25 slash 27 disassembly uh, remember in the previous video we did a dana 44 that was a early dana 44 um, but they share a lot of similarities with a uh, modern day one and uh, we'll go over that setup later uh I'm going to disassemble, but I'm going to have both uh, differentials completely disassembled so uh, that way I can clean them and paint them all at the same time and uh, do the setup and rebuild pretty much, you know, side by side. And um, hopefully, you notice a little bit better video quality and sound quality. I picked up a, a new camera and uh, we got some rain, rain coming in. So, you're probably going to hear some rain in the shop here. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and get this cover popped off so we can see what we're working with uh, gear-wise. Hopefully it's just as uh, nice as the rear. And then we'll move on to our uh, steering knuckles. Got another uh, axle tag that survived, which is very surprising. Let me see that. It's got a 43-8, which is uh, your teeth count, and then 538 gear ratio. All right, looks like you got just as, just as pretty as uh, the front, I mean the rear. And we got a, probably a stuck brake drum or something not wanting to rotate it. And um, we still got some oil in here. So before we uh, pull this out and the pinning out, I'll go ahead and flip it over and drain the oil out. Alright, so I freed up one of my jack stands and kept flopping on me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little hubcap off here. It's gonna expose a there's gonna be a C-clip behind here. Pretty much a like an axle shaft retainer. What's all this? A little bit different. A little bit different style. Uh, flange. Oh no, okay. We're good. So, we're going to take this uh, C-clip out. Undo these bolts. And uh, remove this... Uh, up flange and then we'll have our uh, wheel bearing retaining nuts behind there we're going to take that out and the whole hub and drum assembly is going to come off
This Milwaukee's got a lot of power. I'm just, you know, taking it easy. I don't want to break any of these off. All right, so we got a little bit of corrosion in here, which is to be expected because, you know, this hangs out above your uh, wheel and everything. So it's a good place for water and stuff to sit, especially it hasn't been moving in years. So I haven't heard the uh, audio on this new camera yet. So hopefully, you know, the rain's not too loud. Um, if I have to, you know, See if I can tone it down here in the the uh, video editing software. But you can just see this nasty grease left over. We're gonna try to clean this out as best we can. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, socket for this. Alright, so after the first nut, there's a uh, pretty much like a uh, locking plate behind it. And there's a uh, groove on the spindle to uh, orientate the, uh, the washer. So you can see it with the uh, groove and that groove goes underneath the next nut just in case some of you putting these back together can't remember we're going to take the second nut the inner nut out All right, so pulled out the wheel bearing and try to get it all the way out. All right, I'm gonna take the uh, jack stand out. There's a wheel bearing or uh, outer. Yeah, that brake drum's locked up. And I doubt the adjusters are gonna move on it.
All right, so the reason it's so hard is the uh, brake retainer broke off. The brake shoe retainer, I should say. But here's our hub, and that's it. In the next video, we'll uh, press it out of the drum. That's what kind of sucks about these old full drives is, you know, just uh, to change a drum or anything like that, you got to press it out of the hub. But... So let's put this back under somehow this jack stands a little tall all this is getting replaced so it's all gonna get thrown in the garbage all right, so now what we're going to do is uh, take our backing plate off. Oh, here, let me adjust the camera. Now what we're going to do is uh, take the whole backing plate and everything off of the steering knuckle. And um, I think these are 5 8 bolts. Let me check. Nope, they're 9 16 And um, we're going to basically toss every bolt on this thing, uh, but these are fine thread bolts. Um, these are getting harder and harder to find nowadays, at least for me locally. Uh, everything's moved to uh, coarse thread. The local hardware store used to carry both, but we're going to try to save those if possible. And if I do find some new ones, it's going to get new ones. So ran into a little of an issue. We're gonna have to, uh, I forgot. There we go, it's coming off. I thought we were gonna have to. Take this, uh, I thought this bearing wasn't gonna come off easily. Looks like we're, get, we're getting lucky. Make sure you have plenty of rags and if you're a glove person, you know, wear gloves or whatnot. Cause this is pretty dirty work. So here's the old inner wheel bearing. Our hub seal. What's left of it. Now our backing plate's off. All right, I'm gonna go get some new rags and uh, some brake clean. All right, so just get you a uh, chisel or pry bar and give this some taps to get the spindle out of here. Right. 
see we got a lot of got a lot of corrosion in here. Then uh, also you got your brass bushing. That's something we're gonna have to inspect further. Is that brass bushing rides on this part of the axle shaft? All right. So now to remove our axle shaft, we're gonna have to take our steering knuckle off. So we're gonna take both of our kingpin bearing caps off and then also the seals behind here. So before I move the camera, we'll go ahead and knock out the uh, kingpin bearing caps. These look pretty crusty. These bolts are, as well are fine thread. Most, uh, a lot of things on these are all fine thread. Before I uh, dry the kingpin bear, uh, kingpin caps off, we'll take the uh, seals off. Uh oh, it's not good. These are the uh, top bolts, so they're going to have a lot more corrosion. Yep, and they're just stripping. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I work on this. All right, so after some fighting, got the uh, strip bolts out. In the process of hammering on the uh, easy out, I managed to use the easy out on it. Uh, the lower kingpin cap fell out here off out of view. So what you can do is take it off. You'll probably have to pry it twist it turn it whatever you got to do to get it off and you're going to have shim packs make sure you don't lose these shim packs uh, it's just going to make setting up the uh, kingpin bearings a lot easier just going to go ahead and set that off to the side so now the steering knuckle is going to come off should at least it's been, a, it's been a while since I had to do these. So, oh, I forgot to take the seal off. <laughs> That's why it's not coming off. Let me uh, turn the camera around and we'll get those off. All right, so we've got our uh, knuckle seals that I forgot to take off. They, uh, they're in two halves, which you'll see here in a second. I'm going to try to... There we go.
We should have took these off before we did the kingpins, but. Alright, so one thing you'll notice is these tags here. Um, this one's probably not legible until I clean it up. But basically it'll tell you if you got a Rezepa joint or a uh, basically a Cardin joint, which is a standard U-joint uh, cross, which this has. So kind of a neat, neat little tag to clean up and put back on there. So now the... Uh, raise this up so now that we got the seals off I mean unbolted you're just gonna peel away the two halves of metal and then you got this piece of felt so you can only put these on when you take the knuckle off because the felt's one piece so there we go So here's, here's the inner part of the uh, knuckle seal. Come on, there we go. So you can see. So now we're left with a uh, bare knuckle. This, this one should clean up okay. We'll inspect it for cracks and everything. Um, the earlier the earlier knuckles um, had a tendency to crack here. So they added this reinforcement rib here. I have to hit the dang camera again. But all right, we'll go ahead and um, it's gonna be the exact same process for the other side. And I'll show you the, there's what it looks like bare and empty. And uh, what we have left to do on this side is knock knock the kingpin races out. So these are going to knock out from the inside out and uh, install new ones with new kingpin, kingpin bearings. So, all right, well, I'm going to shut the camera off, do the other side. It's exactly the same. It's just a short side. And uh, we'll do the ring gear ring gear and carrier removal and the uh, pin rem removal just like we did on the uh, rear axle all right so with this carrier this one this one's marked um a lot more legible than the rear um for our uh caps so i'm not gonna score these caps like i did on the rear so we got an l and an l to match up and then the same thing, they got an L and an L, just a different direction. So it's pretty pretty hard to mess up. So we're going to go ahead and take these caps off. This one's probably going to be just as stubborn as the rear. We'll find out here in just a second. Alright, so the hardest part is just keeping this thing solid to try to pry on it.
I'm probably gonna have to flip it upside down and uh, get it out that way like we did before. Yeah, looks like we're gonna do that. All right, so flipping it upside down didn't work. Didn't budge at all. Um, so what I did is I put a bunch of brake clean around here, got a lot of the sludge, because this gear oil is so old. It's basically turning to grease. Had a lot of uh, chunks come out when I drained the oil on it. But you can see I got it removed. Not removed, but uh, it's coming up. Let me turn a little bit, there you go. So you can see the racing the bearing popping up just makes it kind of difficult on jack stands especially hasn't moved in so long and um originally these tabs here these little hole the hole here and the hole here you'd put a pretty much a case spreader tool so it'd go it'd, it'd go down in there and kind of spread the case a little bit to make the uh carrier easier to put in and uh put in and out I obviously don't have one of those. Never even seen one, but. There we go. Almost there. All right, that was a pain. All right, same drill as the rear for removing the pinion. So we're probably going to have to put a lot of heat and uh, all that good stuff just like we did for the uh, rear. For remove the uh, little spacer washer. Should be able to see down in them splines a little bit better. All right, so we're going to use the uh, torch and the air chisel. We're going to at least try to get the uh, yoke off and then um, take the uh, pinion out in the uh, press like we had to do with the rear. And uh, if we do have to use the press this time, I'll show that whole operation.
Probably don't even have it close to being hot enough, but we're gonna try it anyway. This front's not really balancing quite as good as the rear did. Yeah, it ain't budging. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to pull the pinion separately on the, uh, I mean the yoke separately. Um, I don't have a pinion puller, but I got this uh, bearing uh we're going to use this tool later to uh pull the uh, bearings off the carrier and everything um but it fit on the yoke pretty good got it all snugged up we're going to see if we can get the the yoke to come off because it's that way i can you know heat up the bearing a lot better and everything so let's see i just got a pry bar holding it in or to keep from spinning um yep it's actually it's going so that's good news good deal All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the nut off before we get too close and risk uh, getting bound up on us. Still a little warm. It's going to fight us the whole way.
There we go. All right, that was a pain. Go ahead and get my seal puller to pull this seal out. I'm just trying to heat up this bearing around the uh, shaft of the pinion. That's all we're trying to do. We got a lot of a lot of pressure on this right now. All right, let's give it more heat. Then we got we got a lot of pressure on it. You can risk cracking your case and everything like that. And if that's if that happens, we're in we're in big trouble. Well, all that waiting and uh, missed the big pop. So it just shows you how much tension's on these things. When we go to put it back together, it's all, these bearings are designed to be slip fit on this pinion and everything. It shouldn't be under this much tension. So we're gonna go ahead and drive it all the way through. It was a big pop and it dropped about, I don't know, about a quarter inch or so. And now it's just, there we go. Now it's just falling right in. We're gonna go ahead and take this nut off. I got the bearing real, ooh, it's still hot. Got the bearing uh, real hot. Try to take up, try to expand it out a little bit. There we go. All right. All right, so on the front axle, the Dana 25 slash 27, you got inner oil seals. Unlike the rear, uh, the rears out of camera, they just have outers. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those with the seal puller. You can use a slide hammer and stuff too. If we were in the, the if it was in the vehicle. The other one came out pretty easy. I guess the one I decided to film is gonna fight me. There it goes. And then uh, we're gonna drive our races out the same exact way as we did on the rear. And remember the shim backs. See if I can see if I can balance it. So you can see down in there. But anyway, you can see these two tabs here. 
it's going to be the their tabs are in exactly the same spot and that's for you to get a punch down in there all right guys thanks for watching um got it all tore down and uh this is about a week later got the jeep back got the uh, frame moved over to the side gonna put the mb back in here um but during the uh, process to the switch to the GoPro, I filmed the rear axle teardown on my phone. It was going to be the last phone video. And um, unfortunately, in the process of after I edited it and everything, it um, I deleted it. <laughs> so unfortunately, that's gone forever. It was a pretty good video. It had, um, you know, pulling the rear hubs and everything that's uh, pretty difficult without the right tools. Um, so when I do the... Uh, when we do the rebuild of the rear axle, I'll try to explain the best I can how it, you know, tears apart and, uh, you know, some of the uh, shortcomings on the uh, teardown of these. So if you can, please like and subscribe and uh, keep this thing going. Have a good one.